In this episode, we are going to talk about how to answer the most important and the most frequently asked question you would ever come across in any given job interview. And that is the tell me about yourself question. Frankly, this is a question that is like standardized procedure during a, a, a job interview. So for any given interview, you, you definitely are going to get asked this question, either as the very first question or between first to third question, uh, f the first three questions that you're going to be asked. That's, that's a must. If an interview, interviewer doesn't ask you that kind of question, it means they are in, inexperienced. So you're going to face it. And that actually is going to set the tone of your job interview. Um, so without much ado, let's get started. And before then, just do me a big favor and smash the subscribe button right there, right down there. And that would help the YouTube algorithm uh, work to our favor as a channel. Awesome. So let's get started. So basically, most people uh, get asked this question and what they first do is that they present a chronological catalog of what they've done. So they, they would say, okay, or, or, or their experiences, they would just present um, a, a, a systematic step-by-step -step, um, catalog of what they've achieved or what they've done. And typically, they will start with where they were born, um, how they were born. I hope you never do that. And then um, uh, the schools they attended and the work they've done in that order, right? Uh, and that is actually a very wrong approach. I've, I've gone through job interviews for many, 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 many years, and, and that has never proven to be a great approach. So from the perspective of uh, a new African graduate, and you, you're learning from somebody who's been there and done that, you know, I've worked in three different continents, right? So um, Europe, U United States, and then back in Africa. So I'm just going to share some of the experiences that I've um, been privy to when it comes to answering this question very well. Okay, so I'm just going to put this just for understanding purposes. So I'm, I'm going to create a scenario, two separate scenarios. One, I'm going to answer that question in a very traditional format. And then the second frame or the second um, uh, story frame is going to be about how I would want you to think about answering this question, right? So the, let's, let's get rolling. So the first instance is, let's say the job opening is for um, a digital marketing manager, right? The digital marketing manager for, let's say, an ad agency or let's say maybe um, a bank or a telecom company, any, any big company or medium-sized company, right? So you're a digital marketing manager. Okay, that means that you're going to have some uh, ability, some, some, something in your experience that shows that you've managed people before and you also understand the subject matter very well. So um, I'm going to just, just make the story up as we go along. So let's pick a male character. So let's say the, the, the person's name is, let's say, John Smith, right? Or, uh, yes, let's just pick John Smith. So John Smith is asked this question. John Smith, tell me about yourself, right? And John Smith goes like, goes like this. Oh, thank you so very much. Um, my name is John Smith. I was born in uh, 1995 um, and in, in uh, a city in Ghana uh, called Kumasi, right? And... Uh, where I went to school at Methodist Primary School. Uh, that's where I did my primary education, and I did, went to middle school in the same school. Then I went to secondary school in, um, um, let's say, Achimota School or Achimota College, right, which is one of the uh, premium schools in Ghana. And from then, I went to University of Ghana, and from I did a bachelor's in business administration at the University of Ghana. Then from University of Ghana, I had um, a 4.0 GPU um, uh, uh, average or GPU. Uh, uh, you know, your average was uh, uh, 4.0, right, which is solid. And from there, I went and did my master's in business administration 
majoring in marketing at the University of Manchester in UK. So I finished my education in University of Manchester uh, in 2011. And I did my, I had my first internship um, opportunity with uh, Standard Chartered Bank in Accra, Ghana, uh, working as a marketing uh, executive or marketing rep. And uh, from there, I did that job for about two and a half years. And in 2015, thereabout, I got promoted to become a lead marketer in my division. And then from then, I moved to another bank, uh, which is Barclays Bank. So I went to work with Barclays Bank, um, the executive marketing group, and uh, I've been there since. And it's been five years now, and I'm looking for an opportunity to uh, explore or to, to actually uh, improve myself. Okay, so that is scenario one. Okay, so there, this is somebody who's got great background, his education, and, and that, that, that. But what you notice is that it's boring. You know, that if there were 50 people, or actually, let me limit it down. If there were five people being interviewed for the position, John Smith, that I've just described, right after the interview, he's not going to be remembered that much because his intro is very very traditional and extremely boring that is what you get from 95 percent of applicants all right so now let's segue into a different uh to another candidate so let's pick a a lady right i'm very biased towards ladies i have three girls so I'm, I'm, <laughs> so let's pick a lady right so now the lady's name is joanna smith Okay, so Joanna Smith is presented with the same opportunity. And, and let's look at how she responds to this tell me about yourself question. So, so the interview asks Joanna, Joanna, tell me about yourself in this interview. And Joanna goes like this. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, my name, uh, as you mentioned, is Joanna Smith. I was born in a village in Ghana, in the upper, upper uh, region of Ghana, actually the upper west of Ghana which is quite a deprived area and um, one of three girls and I'm the, I'm the first. And it so happened that after I completed middle school, um, my dad fell ill and passed. And the, the process was so excruciating for us being that we came from a very poverty stricken background. Um, I did all my best and I, I scraped through high school and Luckily enough, I was able to come up with very good grades. And when the time came for me to enter uh, university, my mom got severely ill that she was, in, she was bedridden for almost two and a half years. And because I was the first of three girls in the family, I just couldn't go to college because I didn't have the resources to pursue edu the education. And also... I also needed to be around to take care of my younger siblings. So I hung around, did all sort of jobs, all jobs here and there to survive and to take care of my, my, my alien mom and my siblings. So it got to a point that the only opening that I was fortunate enough to get was a receptionist position at a local mailing company. So I offered to do that. The pay wasn't great, but I really loved it because I met people every day and I really enjoyed that process. So along the line, I noticed that since I didn't have internet at home and the company I worked for had internet at home, I'm, I'm internet at the office, I would typically will ask permission to stay between an hour and an hour and a half every day after work so that I'll be able to self-study. So YouTube became my my uh, go-to um, uh, tuition platform. It was like my Bible, basically. So I fell in love with marketing at that time. And the little I got to know about mar marketing really got me so intrigued that every day after work, I would stay for another one, an hour, an hour and a half. And depending on what I was learning on YouTube, sometimes even two hours. And I would self-study digital marketing. So anything from Facebook advertising, 
um, Twitter marketing, LinkedIn marketing, YouTube channel setup, all those things, I, I began to study them. And then all the, over the weekend, I would volunteer to come and do all the office work for free so that I'll be able to get a chance to continue my self-education as well. So I did that for about a full year. And right after that, I needed to get some work experience and also, most importantly, to um, be able to earn a little bit more to support the family because mom's situation was becoming gravier and gravier. So I uh, searched for jobs everywhere I couldn't find. And purely because, well, one of the main reasons was because I didn't have a college degree or university degree for that, that matter. So finding for a job was difficult. So I had the idea that I would approach three companies and offer digital marketing services, my digital marketing services to them for free for 90 days. That was what I wanted to do because for me, there was nothing much to lose. Um, and my, my siblings, every, everyone was on board because I had to take that kind of risk. So I got this opening at uh, an, a local ad agency in, in, my, in the town that I was living in. And I went there and within uh, 60 days out of the 90 days, I was able to set up their entire social media uh, platform. So I set up Instagram for business for them. I set up their Facebook account, uh, business channel. I set up their pages. I set up YouTube channel and, 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 and the rest for them. And when we started, remember everything was zero. So between day zero to day 60, I was able to get their YouTube subscribers from zero to 8,000. Because I was always going around with a camera, capturing some of the things that we were doing. And it was very engaging and fun to the, the client base. So, and, of, and because of that, business grew uh, from $10,000 per year to about $25,000 within that space of time. Because they got two clients that really were high paying clients within that 60 day window. In no time, but before the end of the 90 days, they brought me on as a full-time employee where they paid me, which was awesome. So I did everything that I could and I expanded the social media reach. So we went from almost zero likes on Facebook on our Facebook pages to 15,000 likes on, on our Facebook pages in less than six months. And then from there, I was the only employee at that time in, in, in actually marketing, right? And uh, by the time I left, or actually by the time uh, it was one year, not the time I left, by the time it was one year, uh, I had three people working for me because our functions had expanded so much and the company had seen the value in investing in marketing. So from there, I moved to work for a bigger advertising agency in the biggest in Accra, which is the capital city in Ghana, with that experience. And so from there, I managed a team of 15 uh, people. So from designers to content creators to uh, Facebook ad experts to SEO uh, people, and we did a phenomenal job. So for this agency that we did, when, by the time we started, we had about 25 clients. And as we speak today, we have well over 200 client base. We've been able to help clients, some clients grow um, their, their, uh, their sales, some of them from just a meager um, $20,000 a year business to well over $200,000 a year businesses. And we, ha we have probably about 15, 15, between 15 and 20 of such clients with such remarkable stories. And not to disadvantage myself going forward, I've enrolled in a degree program uh, whilst I work. So I'm doing my, I'm in my third year in uh, doing a bachelor's in marketing program uh, at the University of Ghana, but I'm doing it remotely. And I'm very glad to bring my experience on board uh, to your company as far as this position is concerned. Thank you. So now, look at the two contrasts. One of them was stating chronologically 
what they have done or what their background was. The other one was stating experiences, skill set, background, difficulties, joy, and, uh, you know, or, or I would say problems that they've encountered in their lifetime that makes it relevant for the work that they are applying for or for the job opening. So to piggyback on these two examples or these two scenarios between John Smith and Joanna Smith, which one would you have employed? I wouldn't, for me, the answer is going to be very obvious. I wouldn't care so much about the, the guy with all these mountain of degrees. I care about somebody who's, who's done something, who has a compelling story, right? So what you're going to do is that when you are asked this question, you are going to have to rehearse, come up with, look at your background very well. Come up with a compelling storyline. And it has to be a story of integrity, right? You can't lie because you're going to be found out. Look, most people underestimate the kind of background they come from and the story that their background tell. That is going to be your asset when you are answering this question. Because what you're going to notice that you're going to come up with an angle that will make you memorable. So if there are 10 people interviewing with me, the storyline that I'm going to come up is just going to be so compelling that after the interview is over, maybe two days, three days, even a week after the interview is over, the guys who are interviewing me are going to remember me, right? So you're going to come up, the key is you're going to come up with relevant skills and experiences and background story that makes it relevant, to the, op the job opening you are applying for. That's number one. And you're going to have to frame it in terms of a storyline. Everybody loves a story. Everybody loves a story. I always keep saying that great preachers are preachers that preach interwoven their messages with stories. And that is exactly what you would have done. And your story has to capture your experiences and your strengths. And even sometimes even vulnerabilities. Because what happens is that in my experience, anytime I've come up with such great stories, right? That is anchored in integrity, real life integrity, true stories. What happens is that sometimes the interview gets turned into the panel talking about my story. Oh, wow. So in terms of Joanna's case, they would say, Joanna, wow. So how are your siblings? How did your, uh, how, what, where are your siblings now? Right? Oh, wow. So how about your mom? Uh, how is she? How is her health? So you realize that this, the, the interview has moved from actually the real interview to about your personal story because human beings are like that. We love to be told a great story. And that story must not just be a folk, uh, you know, folklore or folk story, right? But it has to be a story that's actually relevant to the position that you are, you are applying for. And then finally, your story must interwo be interwoven with results. So you remember that in, in Joanne's, uh, Joanne's case, um, she talked about how when she got a job with the first digital agency, she was able to move them from zero subscribers to God knows how many thousand subscribers they had on YouTube. So that is powerful results driven story she was able to talk about how she started alone as the only one in the marketing department to frankly have uh, ended up having three people that she was managing right so that is results driven she talked about how she moved from three managing three people to managing 15 people and she cataloged about the various segments within the marketing department. So where she was managing people who were doing SEO, people who were doing design, people who were doing content, uh, writing, and, 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 and the likes. So you're going to have to have a story that is not only impactful, but it only, it's also have to have some kind of results to prove that you really know what you are talking about in the context of the job opening that uh, you, are, you are applying for. So basically, this is it. If you're able to craft your answer within this context, I bet you, you you're on, on track to a wonderful job interview. Anyway, thanks so much for your time. And once again, once again, destroy the subscribe button for me right on YouTube. Destroy the subscribe button and let's get this channel exploding. Thank you so much 
for your time and i can't wait for you to join me on the next episode bye bye now